Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> did you did you get John set up? Yes. Yep. Good. And it turns out his his appointment was actually at eleven, but they scheduled it fifteen minutes early to make sure he, he gets hooked up into Zoom. So, oh. Um, And he was. <laughs> and it's possible that the doorbell may ring. He's he's getting some more of his his um, photographs printed on canvas, and they're being delivered sometime between eleven and one today. <laughs> by FedEx. And I don't know if we have to accept delivery or if it just they'll put it on the. He's having them printed on canvas. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, the the ones in the back behind me. Yeah, those are on canvas. Ah, they they're they're really lovely because they don't glare. Yeah, do with with glass, and they don't get filmy with the dust on glass. I mean, I suppose they get dusty a little bit, but not bad. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So we've we've got a house full of them. <laughs> I'm not sure where he thinks we're going to put them, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he wants to have them printed so that it can be his legacy. Oh, that's nice. Well, they are really nice work and a great legacy. What the heck? Yes. <clears throat> well, I'm, but uh, we're. Uh, we're in the midst of the renovation of the downstairs bathroom. Ah. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, but actually, I think they're not doing anything today, so it it will be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's right over your head, practically. Right. Um, I don't know about next week what's going to happen. <laughs> Are you are you changing it to make it a walk-in shower or? Yeah, we're putting a walk-in shower and and stackable washer and dryer. Mm -hmm. um, and they had to, in order to have room, we had to um, extend that space into the closet area uh, mm -hmm. there. So the the closet is gone, mm -hmm. and um, the, there'll actually be a. Um, sliding door there mm -hmm. into the bathroom yeah um and you know we're just kind of looking at the um the possibility that someday one or both of us may need to be living on the first floor instead of two floors yeah <laughs> and they're done that i mean the yeah other, the other option is a is a, uh, ch a chairlift but yeah yeah that's it's 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 really nice to have the washer and dryer on the main floor <laughs> yeah well we have it there now but huh? it takes up the whole space yeah. <laughs> that, that we have at the moment and we really wanted to to put in a stand-up shower there so yeah uh, there isn't a shower in that bathroom no no there so this is a real addition mm -hmm. um which will, you know, it's an improvement. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, uh, worth the investment in terms of <laughs> value of the house. But yeah. uh, um, 
Yeah, it's we we, uh, we have a fantastic plumber uh, in oh, this good. area, um, and uh, so he's kind of managing the whole prospect, and he uses the the um, carpenter and electrician that he uses for projects are you know doing doing it and they seem to be really good so excellent uh it's um <clears throat> we have chaos in our dining room at the moment but uh <laughs> that will pass <laughs> <laughs> And, everything that was in the closet is in the dining room at the moment yes the the washer and dryer were supposed to go out on the back porch but um, uh, the guy was here by himself and he didn't have a dolly and he so he could only you know slide them on mm -hmm. uh, canvas into the dining room so that's where they are at the moment <laughs> But we'll get them moved one Did step you, at a time. <laughs> were you able to see any of the Northern Lights last night? You know, I forgot to even look. Did you look? I looked, and I couldn't see anything here. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine has family in uh, Wakefield, Massachusetts, I think she yeah. said. And she sent some spectacular rose-colored sky. Yeah just gorgeous um my sis my daughter in new hampshire she couldn't see anything with her naked eye she took a picture and it's slightly rosy ah in the, in the picture she, interesting yeah and one of her friends who was i guess up higher and fewer trees around saw a, a marvelous one another another yeah. rosy one so um i don't know how long it's supposed to keep going on but um, I saw a really spectacular picture, I think, from England of it um, somewhere, <laughs> probably up north. Yeah. Um, and, well, they're a lot further north than we are anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, somebody who lives in uh, Colchester mm -hmm. uh, actually... Uh, uh, an acupuncturist the husband of, of my massage therapist is a photographer and he got a good picture of it I'm not sure where he was um, I think they have a place in you know somewhere north of here he may have been up there yeah well it might have been if you were high enough and few enough trees but yeah uh, our problem is we have so many trees that yeah uh, me too uh, i love having the trees but it does limit <laughs> that possibility yes <laughs> sky sky gazing is not that great <laughs> no uh, when the boys were uh, small young mm -hmm. um they were really interested in that and we got a, a small telescope and um at that time there was an area out in the backyard where we could see a lot of a lot of the sky so we used to go out at night and do that nice um i don't know where that telescope is now <laughs> uh well I guess we should start. So I, I will say in response to your comment to me the other day that I um, 
have, have prepared a, a different class today. Um, I'll be interested if you think um, it will be of any assistance to you. But I understand what you're saying. Um, I guess I would have to say I've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, um, any other questions or comments that you want to add or, or make at this point? <laughs> um, I don't know, just that it drives me nuts when John is always lambasting himself for forgetting things or not doing things fast enough. And, and and then I came to realize, um, maybe it bothers me because I'm doing it to myself. <laughs> not loud and not as vicious, but Yeah. But uh it's it's um <laughs> as we age it's hard to accept the, so those changes. Yeah. Uh, certainly, I can sympathize with that. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's um, it is a process, mm -hmm. and it is it is one. Um, actually, uh, this lesson today is um, forgiveness and self acceptance. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I was thinking. Um, as I was getting it ready, um, <laughs> how how well it applies to me too. So <laughs> we can both grow from this. Absolutely. Well, I always grow from my students. So, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I found uh, teaching to be one of the ways that I learned the most yeah. because. <laughs> I had to be able to <laughs> uh, to do it. So mm -hmm. anyway, um, so I hope this will be good for you. But Thank let's you. do a little eight gates, and then we'll uh, we'll go into it. Oh, would be a good idea if I. Uh... You, you muted me, so I unmuted me. Oh, good. No, that was uh, accidental. I was trying to change my camera. <laughs> So stepping out and coming into your basic structure, really just take a moment, allow yourself to feel yourself where you are, feel your feet opening and releasing down to the earth. Feel your body lengthening both downwards and upwards. So by way at the crown of your head can connect to the universe. Making sure everything is open. and not stretched, nor collapsed. Finding that in between where you can allow everything to be open.
aware of extending your mind through your body. So that you actually feel what's happening in your body. Then flowing into cloud hands,
So, uh, as always, when I go into a new one, there are more words. <laughs> <laughs> but you can take out of that uh, the core practice, and we'll we'll do that. I will do that. Um, you know, in in two weeks from now, or the 25th, I guess, is our next one, whenever, the, whenever that next class is. Yes. <laughs> so, <clears throat> today we're going to look at an issue that's rather important, and it is the ability to forgive yourself and accept yourself. We're certainly living in a world of stress and anxiety and self-image has become overwhelming for example young people want to take pictures of themselves and you can hear many people not forgiving themselves for what they see in these images. But everybody screws up at one time or another. Everybody, everybody does things that honestly, if they could turn back the clock, they would not do. And everybody also has the fact that they very often don't forgive themselves for things they did and even for what other people did. Now, if we start looking at it, part of being able to accept yourself is that you have to somehow be okay with the flow of the universe. Now, why many things happen to anybody, no individual can ever know. Are the hum humble humble things you did what other people and what other people did to you really your own doing did you really have any part in it and if we go back in time to when christianity was powerful if something bad happened to you then god did something to you and you deserved it and if god can't forgive you uh, how how can e you even forgive yourself so the universe has a flow I think if anyone is going to be really honest they truly don't know why half of the stuff that happens in the world happens there are very often forces that simply move through and time and space. Whether you uh, want to call the flow of history or just natural cycles, and anybody understands, and nobody understands, why crazy stuff happens. Nobody understands why quote unquote bad things happen to good people nobody knows why people go to war when everybody knows that when you're involved in war it's absolute insanity the current mid-east conflict being a very classic example and yet we don't forgive ourselves. And once we don't forgive ourselves, we start blaming ourselves. And in most Western society, when a person has guilt and blame and shame, usually their inner world gets twisted. Usually their mind suffers incredibly. And usually they don't feel at peace with themselves and they definitely don't accept themselves because if you think you're fundamentally wrong how 
in heaven's name can you forgive yourself when everybody will so easily judge and blame other people. So this is a powerful force. And one thing that really has to be done in, in order to uh, lessen this is that you simply need to stop resisting the flow of the universe. But then there is human ego. Normally, it resists, it resists the flow of the universe. And the sense of being the center of the universe means that only things which you uh, would like should happen. But there are forces that move through the world and it's really nice not to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. But, this, but it does happen. And then that sense of a, a whole cycle in the world, the Judeo-Christian world anyway, of guilt. But again, what is guilt? Your ego is looking for some sort of excuse for why things were out of its control. Because if the human ego likes anything, it likes being in control. This is just the way it is in the West. They have uh, equivalent things in Asia where face and shame have as much or more power, power to distort a person's images than guilt has in the West. But it always keeps coming back to something in the flow of the universe, which says that A should happen, and yet intrinsically you resist that force. You want B to happen. But the only way that B can happen is for you to resist A. You feel that you have to just resist the natural flow of what happens. Now in this process, the Taoists have always had a very basic philosophy that most human beings want to be God. Their ego, if it gets everything it wants, you just say, okay, ego, you can have whatever you want. The first response is, I want to be God. And now a days, there are many ways of being a God. You can be president, you can be a person of great wealth or a person of great power. But whatever, but while it's a little, while it's a little God, or whether it's a big God, this desire to be a God is extremely powerful inside of everybody's ego. Usually when people have a great, um, have great fantasies, they don't fantasize about being a housekeeper or a carpenter or a person who sweeps the streets. They want to be something very, very big. You may have natural abilities because the flow of the universe says that sometimes people will get tremendous capacities in the world. And it won't necessarily have anything to do with their intelligence or their strength or their merit. The Chinese have a great way of putting it. They say that when the light of heaven shines on you, anything you do will bear incredible fruit. But if the light of heaven doesn't shine on you, you can be the most um, deserving person on the planet, but none of this is going to happen. And of course, people have tremendous pride and deep self-acceptance Acceptance. 
if from a very young age they get incredibly wealthy and powerful what if you were born a prince back in the old days what did this person actually do to deserve that except be born to somebody but the ego will make you want to think that you are somebody especially wealthy exceptional where where when in fact you may not be why are some people just gifted with having incredible intelligence they didn't necessarily do anything to get it and why is it that some 18 or 20 year olds will all of a sudden become incredibly uh, rich and powerful did they do something to be worthy of it does the person genuinely deeply inside himself accept that the, they should be this powerful and influential everything rolls their way but do they really accept themselves but the same thing is true when someone does something that they can't forgive themselves for at least the Catholic Church using the con confessional had a mechanism where people had a way that deep self-acceptance and deep loathing could be turned into self-acceptance for most of the people on the earth when they know they've done something wrong regardless of the uh, bravado about how um, the other person deserved it they don't accept themselves and they actually don't feel very good about what they did what that often does is actually make them feel that they have to justify what they are and what they have done but continuing to do something just as bad or worse nobody nor not only do they get no peace but usually they make everybody around them have a lot of problems so let's meditate a little about this so what I'm going to ask you to do as we sit and breathe is to start at the crown of your head and scan downwards until you find a blockage and when you do you start going ice to water water to inner space when you do arrive at inner space I want you just to stay in that place and start seeing what comes out of it
Many people confuse the force of their ego and the force of the universe. They truly confuse those two things because the force of the universe is happening regardless of what's going on inside of you. Oh, you, you can add your force to it. And do you feel some sort of force moving through you? If it feels like a nice force, see how you try and grab and possess it. But that doesn't help. And another part that really doesn't help is the way you'll try and resist it. You'll try and resist it rather than just accepting that it is. The force inside of you that is going to try to resist this is your ego. But let's not use that word for a minute. Because truthfully speaking, almost nobody knows what it is. It's not just that you have an opinion or you have an agenda of I want this or I want that. It is the thing inside you that makes you feel separate. I am an independent being. The fact is, everybody has their own quality. But there also is something that just moves. And you could say it's yours, but you could say it's anybody else's as well. You wouldn't know. You just know it has a kind of force or strength behind it. So there is this force that's moving through the universe. And there is the force that you could call the ego, or at least whatever you can perceive is the ego. But begin to notice how the ego resists the flow of the universe. People do it involuntarily. It's not that they even consciously realize they are doing it most of the time. They just do it in a kind of a reflex. But there is your ego. There is also the force of the universe. Simply look inside yourself. Look at how your ego resists the flow of the universe. 
two possibilities, two forces, as it were. Now, the ego can manifest itself in many ways. Many people try and say that they are free. They are some kind of a god. It's my right, my ego, my free will. But do you always have a free will? Look into this. Ice to water. Water to inner space. Now one agenda that goes with this is I have free will. And you just try and find out what is the flow of the universe and what is my free will. Those two things really have a tendency to get confused. So starting from the crown of your head, have that agenda. Start dissolving downward. talk about the force of the universe. Free will is a way that manifests very easily as an idea in people's lives. If the force of the universe is at play, do you really have much free will? Small things, yes. Big things, maybe. Why are people driven on paths through their lifetime that they don't make any sense? Or why does something happen that all of a sudden shifts a person's life? They go in an entirely different direction. they choose this because it's very obvious how many people have not chosen that way and if it is not their free will what is it if the ego wants something usually if they get a bit of that it's enough but if it's not enough it can continue through an entire life and then they're usually usually just subservient to some force that is moving through their life and this has often been called fate But is it fate or just this force? And if you don't like the way this force is moving you, 
there is an old phrase which says God will not damn people as much as people will damn themselves. And when you have this great resistance, there is no way that you're going to free yourself from things that it pushes you into. You're going to accept that what you're doing is your ego driving you as the method of its fulfillment. And will your ego always be obvious? Probably not. And what's the other common phrase that exists? It's easier to see the faults of others than your own. Yours are right in front of you, but you never see them, and you resist them. You make an ego out of them. You make an identity out of them. Just like there are 10,000 agendas, there are 10,000 egos. But what is creating the constant manifestations in your life? that you're probably going to wish to be forgiven for. So is it you that's doing it? Or is it just something that's moving through your life? And even if it is something that's moving through your life, you may be taking it in in a rather bad way, which is why you're looking for some sort of forgiveness. Because you will only truly accept yourself once you forgive yourself. Now for many things, that are inside of people. The only person who can truly forgive them is themselves. Although sometimes if someone externally does it and the force of that person's being is strong enough, that will give a person the strength to forgive themselves. But the first trick in this forgiving yourself is to get a sense of deep self-acceptance. It is that you need to recognize how the flow of the universe is moving through you. And this is a moment-by-moment moment thing. It's not that you find out on October 31st or November 12th of the year X, and 50 years later it resolves. This is going on moment-by-moment moment in your life. Because there are so many things we wish to be forgiven for. And once we forgive ourselves, there is no internal need to be forgiven. But there often is before that. And that's the reason why it's so common that on people's deathbed, they, 
They will even say quite out loud, please forgive me for whatever it was that they feel they need to be forgiven for. But the sad part is that they may, that may have been inside of them for 20, 30, 50 years or more, carving their insides out. Ice to water. Water to inner space. Now, when you find something that you feel you need to be forgiven for, is that going to be enough to intellectually think, I should be forgiven for this? Because the stuff is probably wound right into your soul. So start dissolving it. Whatever way that you are resisting the flow of the universe, Because it will only be after you can release enough of that pressure that you will be able to forgive yourself and find self-acceptance. Bruce has always said somewhat jokingly, inside of everybody is everything the most sublime and the most heinous and cruel. It's only a question of what you allow to activate and manifest. And what's making a big difference in that is the flow of the universe. It will push certain of the qualities forward. And very often, people with extremely negative self-esteem will not accept themselves enough to be able to believe, I can do this, or I can do that, or I should at least give it everything I got. They are positive from day one that they're going to fail or they think they are not worthy enough to succeed. All of this is simply the way the universe, the universal resistance is activating what's inside you. So if you have any feelings like this, focus on those feelings. Ice to water, water to inner space, and dissolve the resistance that's causing them. It's not a problem thinking you can be anything a hundred times worse than Hitler or a million times better than in your favorite angel. But when you cannot accept that that's possible, you resist the flow that's moving through you. 
And the more you resist the universal flow and you don't know where it's coming from, usually the stronger its influence becomes on you. And if you don't resist it, it just moves through you and comes out the other side, releasing the way it's caused you to become fixed, like wet cement dries into concrete. Ice to water, water to inner space. And if it happens while you're dissolving the sense of resistance, no matter how many little roads you go down, you feel I have this type of resistance and I have a, a, a sort of an ego manifestation. Well, keep on focusing until you dissolve them. Until your agenda is to take you back to a source that is not accepting of being influenced. Ice to water, water to inner space. You're a human. Humans have an incredible number of imperfections. And they are subject to the forces of the universe. And you're still a human that can transcend them. You're not a duck, you're not an elephant, you're not a rock, you're simply a human being. And if you can accept that, you also can forgive all the nonsense you think you need to be forgiven for. And forget it. And if it turns out that it really was nasty nonsense, simply don't do it again, which will also remove the pressure inside you to have to repeat it. It's not a conscious pressure, but something that comes from inside you that you really can't stop. Ice to water. Water to inner space. Now many people today suffer from what is commonly called uh, low self-esteem or the flip side, hyper acceptance, arrogance, which is hyper self-esteem. The fact of the matter is that both of them are bogus. If you have the good luck that the light of heaven shines on you, fair enough. But that brings up other issues like compassion and whether you're going to choose to use what powers have been given to you in a way that benefits everything or tears everything apart while trying to make your ego feel better. But for this going beyond self-esteem is really what the agenda is. Getting beyond positive self-esteem and going beyond negative self-esteem. 
so that the force behind the flow of the universe loses most of its ability to negatively impact you. So that in the way you pass on this force, there is something that naturally creates balance and compassion. And so this was another of the 10,000 agendas. So practice this until we meet again, keeping in mind that we live in a world where negative self-esteem or overly aggrandized self-esteem is really not making people's lives any happier. It's the same today as it was thousands of years ago. In the modern times, it's a little bit more difficult because we are bombarded with so many issues that can twist your ego into places that just never had the opportunity to go before. So close when you're ready.
sending all benefit gained from this practice out to help all the sentient creatures of the universe. Any thoughts or questions? Thank you. Well, thank you. I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Next week is we're coming in person, right? Yes. On Wednesday? Yes, if you can. That would be great. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess we need to let Bill know because we talked about this after class. And it, Bill Nagel. Uh, he would, he's not in that part of the class. Um, well, I mean, we can do the whole thing. I mean, oh, you could do the whole class. I'll, I will let him know. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, because um, we're going to arrive for the whole class. Yep, yep. I'll let Adam know, too, although I don't yeah. think he's ever available. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Adam. Well, so uh, have a good rest of the, the weekend and... Uh, I hope John's okay. Give him my best. Thanks, Carol. <laughs>